So today I wanted to introduce you to some new fertilizer products that we have available that we have in stock. It's a dry, soluble fertilizer from ICL. ICL is based in Israel and the, the products that we have are going to be high in phosphorus and or potassium. They're going to be very water soluble. Most of them are acid based, meaning they will lower the pH of the water and remove bicarbonate. So it's kind of a, a multi-use product, not only to provide fertility to the plant, but also to amend the water and even potentially amend the soil. It's a product that's been used in specialty crops. It's not being stocked by, by large retailers at this point. And so we decided to go ahead and bring a few pallets in. We've got about 12 pallets of product that we'd like to use this year and do some testing and validate the results based on nutrient availability of phosphorus and potassium. There's one product that has some zinc in it. So if you're in need of any of the phosphorus or potassium for in-season nutrition for your drip system, let us know and we can help you out. So I'm Kurt Graham with Nutri-Drip Irrigation. Today I have with me Cortland Beyer. He's our uh, lead researcher and kind of mad scientist here at Nutri-Drip. He does all the acidizing and chlorine of drip systems, so it helps us understand the chemistry of what's going on in the water. One of the things we wanted to demonstrate today is how to do a jar test and what happens when you do a jar test and things turn cloudy. Why that happens, and, and we have two different um, sources of phosphorus here. We have a, a 1034O, which is a very common polyphosphate, which we know does not work through drip. And so we're going to demonstrate why that is. Then we're going to show another product. It's a new ICL fertilizer that we brought in that's a dry phosphoric acid. We'll just show you how clean that stays when you put it in solubilize it in the water. So Cortland, tell us what we've got here and what we're going to see. Yeah, so we're going to just start out with some tap water for the office here. This is hard water. Um, about 300 parts per million bicarbonate. I'm just going to go ahead and put that into both of these beakers here. And um, what we'll do, so I'm just going to take a little shot of this 1034O and put it in this first beaker. So probably less than a tablespoon of product we put in there. Yeah. And you can see almost immediately that reaction happens. Yeah, so that's precipitating the bicarbonates out. That's changing the availability of all those nutrients in that water. And that's going to plug up your drip tape. And a, or a center pivot. Like if a guy was to fertigate with this through a center pivot, this, those nutrients would not be available. That's correct. Yeah. And then the other um, <clears throat> product we have that Kurt mentioned um, is, uh, is a phosphoric based, uh, phosphoric acid based fertilizer. And um, Go ahead and put that in here and give it a mix here. Warm water. The warmer the water temperature, the faster the products will dissolve. So anytime you're taking a dry fertilizer and making a liquid, um, if you have warm, warmer water will help. Yeah, and you can see there that that's just... So there's your comparison. If, if you mix, if you do a jar test and take the, the, the liquid that you're wanting to inject or dry, whatever, put it with your water and it turns cloudy like this, that means it's, gonna, it's going to plug up the drip system. Um, and so the, that would be a non-compatible product. Um, and it's essentially reacting with the bicarbonates That's and right. creating that reaction, that cloudy water. So just a good demonstration of the necessity of using clean product, the necessity of using a product that's approved for drip and for fertigation. And um, if you have any more questions, feel free to get a hold of us here at Nutri-Drip.